Okay, so here's something I, I also want to add um, to this, and that the beauty of creating with these layer um, effects is that any adjustment I make in here is going to all those effects are going to be applied to it. As you can see here, I have a couple of little dots. Let me go ahead and 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 get in a little closer. Move this on over. A couple of little dots here as a result of me being sloppy. If I hit my E key for the eraser tool, I can erase that on out. Okay. Um, if I want to add something to this, by the way, say for example, I'm going to the rectangular tool and I'm going to just make an underlined symbol right in here. And we'll bring it over to the side here a little bit more. Nice thin. I'm going to fill that with my foreground color, which is going to be red. Boom. See that? All that is automatically, a, it's all those layer effects are added to this. I can duplicate this, hit the V key for, for the move tool, right? Now the option to duplicate this on that same layer is hold your option or alt key down. And if I hold the shift key, it'll constrain it in one direction and I can just move this on up and bring it right above this here. If I wanted to include that shape as Part of my logo okay so that's you know layer effects are, are really fun to play around with okay so what I want to do is I want to alter this logo um, to something that is going to be you know non-destructive I want I want to make it a vector graphic that's where the pen tool comes in so once again now for your homework just just to reiterate here, I want to see a progression in layers on how you build things up, okay? Um, as, as, how, 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 you, how you basically going to come about creating your, your final logo of choice. So to assist me on this one, I'm going to turn off my effects. So look right down here in the bottom of my layer, my effects panel. If I turn that off, I will have just left my actual symbol here. Now, let's go ahead and get in close. And I'm going to focus on the actual letters themselves. So I'm going to use the pen tool. P for the pen tool, or right down here, number eight on the right hand side. If I click and hold on it, I just want the standard pen tool. The whole idea is I'm going to create some circular shapes and linear shapes. I'm going to start here. And I'm going to start refining this um, um, this particular graphic. I'm going to start here, click and release. I'm going to hold the shift key and click and release to create a line, a straight line. Now I want to create my curved tip here. So what I'll do is... I'm going to take my brush or my tip of my tip of my pen tool and I'm come up almost a 45 degree angle here. So if you think about dividing the shape in half, so let me hit undo there. I didn't mean to do that. But look at the entire shape. And I'm going to cascade that up just a little bit there and attach that back to the bottom. Look at that shape from there to there, right? We divide it in half. I think I'm going to start it here. Click, I'm going to undo that one. Click and drag straight down to get half a circle. We're not doing this with the pen. I'm not going at an angle. I'm coming completely vertical to my guide that I placed there. Okay? So as I come back over to here, right over here, I'm going to stay aligned with this particular piece. Click and drag to create that other shape. Making sure that the handlebar is going to be facing in a direction or flowing with the line that I'm going to match here. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to my edge here and click and release. 
here's where I can make my, I can make modifications. I stopped short of this corner here because I wanted to create a curve. Go to the equal distance on the opposite side, click and hold and drag, and I get a nice little curve there. Okay. So if some of you are used to using Illustrator, you're welcome to use it. Photoshop gives you flexibility with being able to use photography and or your shapes in the program a little bit better than Illustrator. Click and release. It's a straight line in between the two. As you notice that. Straight line in between the two points. I'm laying down points that beats on the string. Here's that curve again. I know where the center of this curve is going to be. So I'm going to click and drag like so. Go to the go right where this curve ends or subsides. Click and drag just on this one slightly. I'm going to undo that so I can come down a little bit more there. That's a little bit better. Making sure the handlebar is, is moving in the direction of that line. Space bar, bring it down. I'm going to create another curve here. So I'm going to stop just short of that angle. Go to the equal distance on the opposite side, click and hold and drag just slightly so that you create a nice little curve in there. As we come up to the top, click and release, see where I'm where I'm stopping, right where the curve, right where the line ends. Take my brush, click and hold and drag it. Follow the line straight to the right. Remember the handlebar is not going up or down, but follow it straight. And that should be good enough right about there. Okay? So that's gonna be your initial path. Okay, that's how that's how you work with paths. Now I'm going to show you this again, uh, but this time I'm going to choose a different option. If you look on your options bar, I have just a standard path chosen. This time I'm going to show you a shape. Now once you create a path and or a shape, let's go back over here, open up my, my, my panel. If we go over to the, not channels, but the path panel, you can see it just created a shape or, or path. If I double click it, you can call it whatever you want, right? I'm going to click OK for now. We're going to do this one more time. I want to accomplish this one more time, but this time what I want you to realize is that you, instead of path, you want to make sure that your shape is selected. You can choose any color that you want. All right, so once shape is, uh, is, is, is targeted here, I can um, alter it. Now, how about if I want to change the color? Look right up here in your options bar. I can fill that shape with whatever color that I like. Just to differentiate it a little bit, we can always go back and change it. Let's go ahead and grab that little blue right there. Let's outline it once again. Let's go ahead and get down lower. In fact, I tell you what, we'll go the opposite way this time. I'm going to go to right to the edge click and release, straight line, right? Click and release, go to the opposite side, equal distance, drag it down. You're following the shape in front of you. It's a straight line from this point to the to, to the um, to the bottom. So equal distance, you got a, you got a sharp edge. What I want to do is tap and release and then tap and drag to get a little bit of a curve in there, making sure the handlebars are at, are tracing the curves exactly. All right, so I'm going to get in closer. You can see this is a little bit off here. If that's the case, um, and you want to correct it right away, right below your pen tool, you got the black arrow. You don't, you do not want the black arrow. Grab the white arrow, direct selection tool, that allow you to target the, the the point if it goes away, and allow you to grab that to to alter that, to take up the slack back there, right? I'm going to take up the slack back there a little bit. All right, bring it on out. Click and release here. Go down to the very end. Go back to my pen tool. Click and release. There we go. Go to where this curve here and curve right about there. Now, as you can see, it's hard to see my shape behind it. Easy. 
under your shape option here. It's about, now, now, if you notice, this is a shape layer because you have that little vector pen tool symbol right there. Little, a rectangular with four points connecting. If we go to the, nor where it says normal, you see opacity on the right hand side. Drop your opacity down so you can, to like 50% or lower, so you can see through it. All right, now let's get in close. Click and release. Click and drag slightly to get that little curve in there. Making sure the handlebar is facing the same direction as uh, or flowing with the edge of your shape. Click and release here. Go to the opposite side, equal distance. Click and release and drag. Click and hold. Not click and release, but click and hold and drag. It creates a nice little curve in there. Space bar, bring it on over. There you are. We're going to start there. Click and release. Look in between the two, halfway, bring it up 45 degree angles and drag it right about there. Do the same thing to close it here. Approximately. There we go. So if we go back to the layer panel or the vector layer, I can bring up the intensity and there you go. You have a vector shape now. Okay. All right. So. Um, I'm going to finish this up real quick and then I'm going to come back, show you the finished product and share with you, share with you wh where we can go from there. Let's get started right on the bottom here, getting closer. I like to start with the straight edges, click and release, click and release. I've got a curve there. Look at the curve where it ends and begins. I'm getting a little closer. Begins here, ends right about there. Click and drag slightly. There we go. Drop it down. Uh, remember, we need to probably bring down the opacity of this layer. Or later on, we're going to have problems seeing it. So just bring it down to something like 30, 25. doesn't matter. Get in a little closer. See the handlebars where it's flow flowing with the shape? Click and release. Equal distance on the edge. Come to the opposite edge. Click and drag to get the curve you want. Once you get the curve you want, just stop. Don't go any further. You go any further, it's too much slack. Pull it back. There. Okay. Go to the straight edge. It's just a click and release between a straight line in between two points. Right where the curve begins, see where it ends right about there, almost a 90 degree angle. Click and drag it up just slightly is all you need. Keeping that handlebar not here. Not here, but straight up vertically on this particular piece. Okay, bring it on down, straight on up. Go to the other side, drag it. Click and release there, get a nice clean straight line. And click and hold and drag, get a little bit of a curve, but making sure my, my handlebars are flowing in the direction direction of my curve. All right, so I'm going to click and release. Oops. Let's go ahead and go back the other way. There we go. The P key there. Click and release opposite side of the uh, that harsh curve, give it a nice little curve in there. Come way over to here to the opposite side, a single line, straight line. Come over to here. And we're going to create a nice clean vector shape. Drag it. So I'm following line in front of me, tracing the shape in front of me. Okay, here, align it to right about there. Click and drag. There we go. That's good enough. Go over here and to my opacity of my layer and make it 100%. Command control zero. There we go. We have our first vector shape. All right. Got several different paths for that. Now let's go ahead to the next one. We're going to do the same thing all the way across, okay? So that, so that all of them are going to be completely outlined accurately. So I'm going to go to my, my layers here. There we go. Now if you notice, we've got several different layers here. We can join them together later on, 
but this will make it a lot more convenient because it gives you a lot more control if we wanted to move any of these around or resize them it gives us a lot more control okay all right let's go back and let's get in close to this one i'm going to quickly outline this out straight line make a, a slight little curve I'm going to have to bring down that opacity there. Yep, it's straight on down. Good. Let's get in a little closer. Fill the screen with that shape. There. Okay. Go ahead and bring the opacity up. See how easy that is? And I'm going to finish the rest here. All right, so I've taken the liberty to finish outlining the M. I want, to, want you guys to watch me here on the, um, the stylized B here. I want everything as equal distance as possible. So I'm going to just move in a little closer, get inside my ruler up here and create a guide. I've got two guides for the outside. Um, I think I'm gonna create one just for the for the inner um, thickness here, just to keep me honest. Keep it about the same, and then go to my vertical guide. I want to make sure that it's gonna be, you know, fairly equal there. There it is. All right. Now these two guides here, I'm not. I don't think they're really dividing it straight down the middle. So I'm gonna have to make some modifications to this. So hit my V as in Victor for the move tool. That's how you move your guides. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to figure out where the center is probably gonna be right about there. Okay, looks about right. I'm I'm eyeing it right now. So now we get to go to our um, vertical this this uh, vertical guide to see to, to tell me exactly where the curve of the B is going to end for both sides, which is right about there. Okay, um, and I'm going to kind of like put one down the center. Okay, and um, of each side, grab the, the I'm going to divide that right in half there and divide the same side right in half right about there. So if we get in close, you can see. That's going to be the center of my curve here. Um, I'm also missing where the top of my curve is going to be. So I think somehow it was moved. Let's go back. I found out where the base of the curve is going to be. So let's go ahead and grab another guide and establish that right there is going to be the top of the curve. Okay. So these guys are going to really help us out here. So if I now, this is a lot of graphic de design elements. Um, to, to to web design. Web design, graphic design is an integral part of web design. I mean, you can't get around it. You, you have to have your skill sets, um, you know, in place um, as a graphic designer to assist you as a, a successful web designer. Um, and again, you can use Illustrator for this. If you are much more comfortable using Illustrator, feel free to use it. Absolutely. So if I go right over to the pen tool, I'm going to go ahead and outline this out. Let's say I want to put one more guide. I want to say right about there is where the, the left side of the B is going to start. So I'm going to target here, click and release, click and release there. Okay, so I've got a, I want to curve here, go to the center portion and just drag it along the vertical side, just like so. Keep it completely vertical. Do the same thing to the other side. Come right down here to, to the base of that curve and just drag it straight down. And it pretty much it pretty much attaches automatically. Pretty much attaches automatically. Let's go ahead and bring that opacity down so we can see what we're doing. Okay, straight on down here. I forgot to put another guide in the center, so I'm going to have to wing it. Um, so right at the top, drag it come to the side here it pretty much snaps to it pretty pretty easily it's getting closer a little bit sloppy 
Say for example, you want your white arrow tool to, to, to modify this before you go any further. Hold the command or control key down. That's a shortcut and I can go back and make these subtle little adjustments like so. Okay, and that worked. All right, I'm gonna go to the, to the um, space bar, move it over and let's zoom back a little bit. Now let's go down. I'm gonna go ahead and put this guide in here. This like I neglected to do earlier. There we go. Now I'm go ahead and tap and release. There we go. Space bar. Um, I, I need to define the interior thickness again. Add another guide right about there. Click and hold in the, in the center and just drag it straight on up vertically, and that that should align just well to this. Now, what I anticipate is going to happen is if I come down to the interior, I'm going to have to go ahead and put another guide right for the interior of this one. There it is, right there. It should snap pretty close, and it did. Just a, a slight little curve. All right, pull this down. Go to the end here. Click and release. Go to the center. Now, I did not decide decide where the top set is going to be, and I did on one side. I want them to be equal. Right down there, it touches to the base. That that should end right about up there. Click and drag it like so. And pull it down. There we go. That's it. So if we go to 100%, we got a nice, clean shape. Okay? So I brought it down. What I really should have done is this. Um, let's do the whole B as one piece, okay? Let's do that instead. Um, so let's go over to. I think we got them all right in there. Let's go, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna step backwards, okay? I'm gonna step back. Step back a little more. Right about there, okay? Now. I'm going to end this on the front section right about there. That's for the B. Click and drag. Now that's going to be a little too much. So what I'm going to have to do is pull up the slack. I'm going to go ahead and bring the opacity down. Uh, we could have done them both separately, but that would have been a pain. Um, command or control. Let's get in closer here so I can see that 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 mouse command or control get the white arrow tool and that will bring my slack in a little bit better alright that's gonna be close to it I can come back and modify this uh, later as well let's go ahead and select it go let's get this piece here if I get in closer there it is control it's like this point there we go that's where we want it to be I'm thinking let's give it a, a just slight little just a teeny little curve in there okay what I need to do is this click on it again because it got, it, got, it was dis disconnected. If I click on it again, it'll restart the curve. Hit my control. Bring that up to there. You see that? It's a little tight, low curve, but it's going to work. And we're going to go to the top. Click and hold and drag. Remember our our hand drawing was sloppy, so we're gonna we're, we're doing a, a a better result here. Come down to the edge to the side, click and hold and drag. Now that's 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 close to what we want. Come straight down, click and release, and I want to establish right at the base of this where I want that to be. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in closer. Click and drag. Come over to the side here. Click and release. It pretty much outlined it automatically. If I come all the way in, say, I believe this will be it correctly here. Click and release. Come to the inside. 
click and drag, outline that curve. Remember that's going straight up vertically. I'm going to make sure that stays completely, oops, completely vertical. Come over to the side. It's going to come down and end right about there. Oops, like that was disconnected again. If that happens, take your mouse so you get in closer. You get that little curve symbol. There it is, little circular symbol. Click it again. That's connected. If it's a straight line, that means it's connected, ready to go to start drawing linear shapes. Click and hold and drag it. There we go. Approximately. Click and release. Drag it to here, straight on up. Click and release. It's almost pretty much there. Click and release, straight on up. Go to the inside, click and drag. Let's match the inside as best as we can. And we can always go back and modify these a little bit. I think my my curve, my line of my guide here is a little bit off. Let me compare it to the other side. It is so, and I can see it on the top as well, but we can modify this one. Um, I'm going to come over to here, and I'm going to redo this, get it in closer. So that guide is a little bit wrong. This is a little more accurate. There we go. Click and drag, click and drag. There we go. That's it. Okay, go to our 100%. Uh, Not bad. Not bad. I think the bottom's a little bit off there. I'm, I can modify that, but I think you guys get the point. Turn that all that off. Okay. Now, to get those two linear lines on the top and bottom, that's pretty easy. Let's go back and get our tools. If you lose your tools on your window menu, all your panels are here. Go to my tools. There they are. Right down here in the bottom. Second from the bottom left, you have um, a, a rectangular and rounded rectangle. Let's keep the rounded shape. Let's go to the top here. Now, all of these individual layers make up that logo. So I'm going to select them all with a shift. It's like the top one, shift, it's like the bottom one. Command or control G to group them all together. And I'm going to double click it, call it logo. That way I can turn them off and on as one group or manipulate manipulate them as one group. Now I'm going to go back and open up that group, target the top layer. And I want the rounded rectangle. Let's go ahead and give it that blue color that we had there um, originally. So um, what I'll do is I'll target the top color and just use my eyedropper that comes with it to target this color there. All right. Click and drag. Okay, now I my shape is there. Now, if I want to make it thinner, I think I think I would like to make it thinner. I'm just going to um, hit Command or Control T for free transform. Now, what I'm going to do is, while I'm free transform, I hold the Shift key and the Alt or Option key. Alt or Option drags to the center, and I am holding the Shift key, so I don't know why it's actually resizing the way it is. Let's go back. Shift key. And I want to make it thinner. That's very interesting. I'll tell you what. That's what we'll do. Let's make this easier. We'll just redo it again. Drag it manually. Make a nice thin line. Sometimes it's fat, faster just to do it manually. There. That's it. We can do a thin one if we want to. We can do it thicker. Maybe we'll do it, do it slightly, slightly thicker.
that works. Okay, all you need to do now is you want to do one for the bottom or accomplish one um, right below it. Just duplicate the layer, Command or Control J. And we have two of them now. Hit the V key for the vic for Victor. Hold the Shift key and that will constrain it straight down. If you hold the Alt key or Option key, that will duplicate it, hold the Shift key, it can do it. We can do like a double thing, something like this. No, your choice. Okay. So I would also play around with this and add more effects to it, or um, something, give it a little more pizzazz, and then use this as uh, uh, my my base logo here. So for your homework assignment, I want you to work on your logo. Um, I would like you to utilize. Uh, you know, I like to see something. You know, hand done. Can use layers, draw it out, kind of get an idea of what you might want to look, look, what your logo might want to look like, uh, and then you know, use your um, vector tools after the fact to clean it up, get 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 a much more precise um, um, look and feel for your logo. All right, and then what I like you to do is just hand in a um, a TIFF file with layers. So don't 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 uh, um, don't merge your layers together. I want to see all your different layers. So get a TIFF file with all your layers in there so I can open it up and, and see your, your progression. All If you have your, your vector shapes are going to be in serious, uh, various layers like what I've shown you here, put them inside a group. All right. So then I can turn that group on and off. And then but below that group, show me all your kind of the progressions that you did hand drawn or whichever technique you use to actually think about it. You're welcome to use photographic content. You're welcome to use any graphic design that you like. Anything that you think you need to represent who you are as an artist or who the customer is that you're designing the website for, um, what best represents their product, that's that's what I want you to create for me, okay? Okay, so let's focus this week on uh, doing this logo and doing something, do a cool little kick-ass little logo, okay? All right.